Hey, fellow investors. This is Charlie Tian again. In my last class, I talked about Peter Lynch. If Peter Lynch taught me how to pick stocks, and Warren Buffett taught me how to understand business. After I learned about Warren Buffett, I read all the shareholder letters of his from 1950s to the current. I read many times. I watched all his interviews, read all the articles he wrote. If we summarize everything Warren Buffett has said. Into one sentence, it is: It is far better to buy a wonderful company at a fair price than a fair company at a wonderful price. So Warren Buffett was talking about two things: the first, a wonderful company; and second, a fair price. I will focus on the first point first: a wonderful company. So, what is a wonderful company for Warren Buffett? To me, to be a wonderful company for Warren Buffett, first of all, it needs to have a a broad and a durable competitive advantage or economic moat. So, where can we observe this economic moat? Of course, you need to understand the business. But if we look at the numbers, one operating number can. Tell very well about the moat of a company, which is a profit margin. We all know what a moat is. A moat is a water that protects a castle. It protects a castle from the invasion of enemies. So a business is like a castle. The moat is what a business has to protect it from competitions. If a business does not have The economic moat. What it usually appears is that its profit margin will decline over time. If a business has a wide and durable competitive advantage or the economic moat, and it can keep its profit margin steady, and it can even increase its profit margin over a long time. Now let me give you an example. Imagine you run a store, you sell rolls. And your business is good. You have lots of customers coming, and you sell at a high price, which gives you a lot of profit margin. But then someone else see you have great business, and he opens another store next to you, also sell rolls. Now you are facing competition. What do you do? To keep your customers, usually what you have to do is to reduce the price. And to keep your customers, when you reduce the price, does your cost reduce? Your rent, the supplier of the rolls will lower the price for you too. No, most likely they don't. So what happens to your profit? Now, for every rolls you sell, you make less money because you have lowered the price. So by observing the long-term trend of a business. You can tell if the business has the economic moat or not. Now I want to ask you a question: What is the average operating margin of the businesses in the U.S.? It is actually around ten percent. But of course, some companies has higher profit margins, some has low profit margins, and I will give you a few examples here.、Uh, the companies we hear a lot about. Google, Apple, Netflix, Tesla, and、uh, you can find the operating margins and all other financial data for those companies on the 30-year financial page of GuruFocus.com. Here are the examples. Now we come to GuruFocus.com. For example, we want to find the operating margin of Google. I just tap Google here, find, and then I come to the 30-year financial page of Google, and you can see、uh, we have all the data here. And the operating margin to find the operating margin is here. It's in the second area. The ratio operating ratios here. The operating margin. We can see that Google has an operating margin. It it was about thirty something percent ten years ago, and it gradually declined, declined, and now it's around twenty two percent. 
22% is still a very high profit margin. But this tells us something. And if I click here, it shows long-term trend of Google's operating margin. And we can see that uh, Google has a declining margin. And uh, it tells us something is happening in Google's business. Uh, now it has lower and lower operating margins. This can be a warning sign if you want to invest in Google. And you may want to study why the operating margin is declining. And let's try another example. If I look at Apple here, if I search Apple, I come to the third year financial page of Apple. Again, I look for the operating margin here. And uh, we can see that uh, if I click on it, it shows a chart. Uh, over long term, long term, uh, the operating margin of Apple is also declining. So it shows us there's some competition as well, which is causing the operating margin or operating margin of Apple uh, declines. And uh, I, talk, I said Netflix also. Netflix, uh, like here, operating margin. You can see that Netflix has an increasing operating margin. So that's usually a very good sign. And when a company has increasing operating margin over a long time, it may mean that it has the advantage that the competition competition cannot get in. So we can see here uh, over the last seven years, operating margin of Netflix has been increasing. So this is a very good sign. Another company, of course, everyone's care about, Tesla, and we can see the operating margin has been negative, meaning the company has been losing money. But it starts to get positive now. And uh, this is maybe why the Tesla stock has been doing so well. And I want to show you one favorite company of mine. It's Church and Dwight, which is the company that makes tools. And now we observe the operating margin of Church and Dwight. And it's here. If I look at here, the operating margin of Church and Dwight it has been quite stable over a very long time. And if we observe over a very long time, it has been increasing more than 20 years. And the operating margin has been increasing steadily. And this tells us there's a mold with the company. And the company can keep its profit margin and can even increase its profit margin over time. And that's why I like this stock. It has been my uh, one of my long-term holding. Another favorite example of mine is a Chinese company, which is called Malta. And if you come to the third year financial page of Malta, uh, you can observe the operating margin. The operating margin is extremely high. It is above 60% and has been always there very, very long time. And you can see originally it was around 30%, then gradually it increased to 60, above 60% and stays there for a long time. And Malta is a luxury liquor brand in China. It's the most recognized liquor brand in China and has been there for a few hundred years. The brand has been there for a few hundred years. And uh, people just recognize it, love it, and willing to pay high price for the liquor. Although I don't tell the difference, I cannot tell the difference between Malta and uh, lower price liquor, but people just love it and think it's a luxury brand. The most dangerous situation is if a company has very low profit margin and the profit margin is also declining. For example, if I use example, J.C. Penney here, and it, we know that it filed bankruptcy lately. And if we look at the operating margin of J.C. Penney, and uh, 10 years ago, it was already not high. It was around 9%, then it declines. If we observe it here, the last 10 years, we can see that the operating margin was just barely, barely above zero. So it's barely positive then it declines to negative, then it was fluctuating around zero, around making money and losing money, fluctuating. So in this kind of case, 
it's extremely、uh, dangerous because the company, the business, does not have moat. It can, it has to lower the profit margin, lower the prices, and it can get into bankruptcy easily. As investors, we need to avoid this kind of company because it has no moat. It cannot protect its profit margin. Now you may understand why Warren Buffett said, "For a wonderful company, the most important thing is to have a broad and durable competitive advantage or economic moat." So, where can we find this kind of moat in a business? And usually, there are a few things can be the economic moat for the business. The first, for example, is the intangible assets such as a brand or patent. I talked about multi before. Why multi has such a high operating margin? Because it has a brand recognition. No other liquor can replace it in Chinese liquor market. And why Google has a high profit margin also, although it has been declining because. It's just the best search engine ever produced, and no competi- competition is even close. And Apple, the brand recognition also. That's the intangible assets. And second is the customer switching cost. For instance, your bank account. Usually, you don't want to switch your bank account because your salary is maybe. Paid directly to there,、uh, you set up all the payment to your utilities, you to your, cre- your credit card companies, and even you know, to your friends, your families. So you don't want to have the trouble to switch it to another bank, unless the advantage is huge. The third is a network effect. For instance, Facebook it has a network f- effect. You on it because all your friends on it. Are on it, and your all、oh, your friends are on it is because you are on it also. All payment network like Visa, Mastercard, all the merchants are using Visa and Mastercards because the customers have the credit card from Visa and Mastercards, and the customer has are using Visa cards or Mastercards because all the merchants are using it too, and that's what that's the network effect. Another thing is a cost advantage, and you just have a lower cost than the customers, and then your competition. Sorry, like Warren Buffett said, why Geico is a great insurance company because it is a low cost insurance company, and all the competitions has much higher cost.、And、many years ago, Geico was a much smaller, very small insurance company, but because of its cost advantage. Because of course,、uh, good management, it has been expanding for many years. Now it's the largest car insurance company in the U.S. Another thing that can give a business the economic moat is a skill. This business is just big, and because it's big, the average cost is smaller, and also it brings it brings a convenience for the customers, like Walmart. It's Huge and has a supply chain that covers everywhere, and it's it's even faster than the government than the military. So this large scale lowers the average cost of the transportation, the supply chain. So that's why it gives it a cost advantage as well, and that is why Walmart has been doing extremely well for many many years. Fellow investors, in this class, I talked about the economic moat. Economic moat is the first thing that Warren Buffett requires for a wonderful company. And by observing the long-term operating margin of a business, you will see if a company has economic moat or not. That is the first step. And to find out the operating margin of a business, you can always come to the third-year financial page of Guru Focus, and come to the operating margins area. Click on the row, you will see the in chart, and it, the operating margin, long-term operating margin, can give you a very good indication of the economic mode of the business. In my next class, 
I'll be talking about the second point of Warren Buffett's wonderful company.、Uh, please stay stay tuned. In the meantime, if you have any questions, please leave it in the comment area of this video. I will answer them in my future classes. See you next time.